So you create with your thoughts. And these creations not only affect you and your reality. You are listening to Turn Your Soul On Radio. I am your host and visionary doctor, Dr. Brandy Victory, and my mission is to assist high-achieving women in closing the gap between feeling unfulfilled to living a life on fire. It is time, ladies, to champion our own lives and turn ourselves on. This is Living Victoriously, ladies. This is how you turn your soul on. Hey, hey, Dr. Brandy here. And one of my favorite things to do is to help women truly enjoy their bodies, to feel healthier, to turn back the aging clock from the inside out, to enhance their energy throughout the day, and to help them feel sexier no matter what age they're in. This is all accomplished through a process that we take together, but we, we, we begin with a personalized health assessment that identifies your toxicities and your deficiencies and the spiritual and emotional blocks that may be getting in your way of you living your own life on fire. And what I've found is that there's always room for optimizing your life, regardless if you're a career woman at the top of your game, a mom who has kids leaving the nest, or an athlete that feels that he's at peak performance. There is always room for optimization. And if you're interested in learning how to optimize your own life and would like to see if you're a good fit to work with me one-on-one, there are a few spots that I've opened up and I wanted to make this available to my listeners of the Turn Your Soul on Radio community first. So if you'd like to apply, head on over to my website, drbrandyvictory.com forward slash activate. That's A-C-T-I-V-A-T-E, drbrandyvictory.com forward slash activate and that's brandy with a y (laughs) and uh, fill out the form you'll be given an opportunity to connect with me and we can have a deeper conversation to see if it's a good fit so thank you so much for being a part of the turn your soul on radio community and i looked forward to the potential of going forward on your wellness journey with you hey soul sisters Listen, I got a quick question. Do you um, do you ever find yourself like in a in a situation where you're in judgment, like judgment of another person, maybe, or judgment of a situation? Uh, if this is you, this will be the perfect perfect episode for you. And um, it, it we're going to talk about judgment and how to turn judgment into love. And uh, if you have like another soul sister in your life who would like to also learn how to turn judgment into love, stop this recording for just a second and shoot them over and uh, share it with them. Like share this episode because she is going to love, love, love this conversation we're going to have right now. Um, yeah, I think it's awesome to be able to turn our funky judgments <laughs> into love. So yeah, I'm going to share that with you. Before we begin, I just want to thank our sponsor, Purium Superfoods. And Purium Superfoods has this very cool product called In Focus. And In Focus is uh, are these drops that you can take or you can put in your child's smoothie or cereal that actually helps improve focus. So it's been great for my patients, my kids with... Um, ADD or ADHD, uh, even the autistic spectrum ch- children who um, are kind of really high wired, it brings them right back down into their body. It's really a beautiful thing. So uh, in Focus by Purium Superfoods, I've got a $50 gift card for my listeners. Uh, if you want to go over and check it out, you basically can get, I don't know, probably two bottles for 50 bucks. You might as well try it. And uh, what you do is you go to ishoppurium.com. It's I-S-H-O-P-P-U-R-I-U-M. Dot com, ishoppurium.com and look up the product called In Focus. It may be two words, I-N-F-O-C-U-S, In Focus. And uh, try it out. If you want my $50 gift card code, it is Dr. Brandy for my listeners, D-R-B-R-A-N-D-Y. So yeah, let me know how that goes for you. I love to hear the, the feedback and the stories about how lives improve because of the things that I am re- recommending. And if your life is not improving by it, I like to hear that too, because I need to know those things, right? Um, all right, on with the show. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about turning judgment into love. And uh, I'll tell you a little story about an experience I had this weekend. So I was at the hot springs with my girlfriends, right? And um, we're just having a great little time. And one of my one of my friends, she's like probably just one of the, my greatest friends ever. She's a naturopath, and she's just so smart, like very smart when it comes to supplementation and this kind of thing. Well, 
we're sitting there talking about osteoporosis and supplementation and K2 and all the things. And she's like giving me her, her insight on some things and how many milligrams and all this stuff. And there's this guy in, in the, in the uh, pool with us. And this is kind of a small, smaller pool, but it, it appeared that he was eavesdropping in on our conversation because he interjected and tried to correct her. And, and she was like, yeah, you need, I can't even remember. So, so many milligrams of K2 for this and that. And he turned around he says, yeah, isn't that micrograms? And um, he wasn't even involved in our conversation, okay? And when you look at this guy, he is huge, like probably 300 pounds at least, okay? Huge dude. And um, and he's in, come to he's like, yeah, I'm a doctor and, you know, all these things. And, and so immediately... I, my hackles went up and so did hers. I felt them and, and pretty much all four of us were like having complete judgment around this poor person, right? Because he's saying he's a doctor, he's eavesdropping, he's interjecting, and he's clearly not in any state of health. Like in my mind, in that moment, I was like, he is just disgracing the industry <laughs> because how can you call yourself a doctor? It's like, doctor, heal, heal yourself first, right? That's, that's my that's my way. And that's what I believe. And, you know, here we are making these stories up about this guy and we don't even know this dude. Right. And, uh, and it was just kind of, we got out of the pools and we had a little talk about it. We were like, okay, you know, we just <laughs> made up stories about this guy. He, maybe he had a wreck and he hit his head and he messed up his pituitary gland and now his metabolism, maybe he eats a great diet and his metabolism is messed up. And just because he's been into a wreck, like we don't know his story, right? But we went into these patterns of judgment around him and what it meant to be a doctor and, and all this stuff, right? And so we actually went into our cabin and we did a meditation and we we did this practice called blowing matching blowing matching pictures and I'm going to teach you how to do that because this is the this is the crux of how to shift judgment to love. So we did and we did we did our blowing our matching pictures and we did a little healing circle to mitigate our own judgment and to help help healing. And it, it was to help heal him if something's ha something's wrong in his world, but also to heal ourselves because we went into this matching picture program with this guy. Okay. And I'll, I'll let you know exactly what that means in, in just a second. Okay. Um, but you know, the biggest, the biggest thing I got out of this was that I wanted to make sure that it just made me aware. So if you're pointing a finger at someone, three fingers are pointing back at you. Okay. So essentially what this means is that if you are disgraced by someone or you have a somatic experience around someone or what they're doing or how they're showing up and you like get disgusted or have judgment or any of those things, then there is something inside yourself that matches that, that you don't like. And you may not even be aware of it. But if you're seeing it in another person, it's in you too. Like we're the whole spectrum of life. And when these things arise to the surface where you're going into a judgment pattern or disgust, this is an opportunity for you to heal yourself. And when you do this healing work on yourself, you will no longer have that same pattern of judgment or disgust around the things that are disgusting to you because it, it won't matter. Maybe they still exist, but it won't matter because you won't have that inside yourself that you're having resistance to. All right. So it's, it's a, it's a lot to swallow. And especially if you don't really like to look at your shit <laughs> and admit that you have it, that's really hard to swallow. But I'm, I'm sharing this with you because it is so essential in your spirit's journey towards enlightenment to really be able to look at, oh, wow, look, I just had this judgment come up. And what is it within myself that I'm judging that reflects what I'm seeing? And what is it that I can do to heal myself through that? And so we're going to go into those practices because for me, I, I, I you know, <laughs> I always want to be able to recognize where like within myself where I may be hiding and just pretending that everything's okay. And so 
when these things arise, I get, I kind of get excited because I'm like, oh yeah, okay. Oh wow. Shoot. Okay. I've got that. Yeah, I've got that. Okay. Let's work on that because I don't want that. (laughs) I don't want to be that, right? I don't want to be a judgmental, uh, overbearing, eavesdropping, uh, person who doesn't take care of herself because, um, and yet pretends that, you know, I'm all hooty tooty. Like that's not who I want to be. Right. So, um, so I do this work so that I can heal these places within myself. Right. And this is is what I teach all my patients. So this is, this is what we do. I'm going to take you through this process as if you were my patient and we are going to work through this together. Okay. So, you know, the idea is that we get as close as we can to the truth of our authenticity. And if we're hiding in our shadows and we're pretending that things are good and okay, and we're not allowing ourselves to recognize when we're having bullshit story come up or judgment or disgust or all these things, and we're pointing fingers at other people or blaming other people and not taking responsibility for ourselves, then that's the furthest thing away from our true authenticity. Like we have to be real. We have to be real. Okay. All right. So here's what you do. The first thing, this is like a five-step process. It's so simple. All right. And I'm going to take you through this process and you might want to write it down. And if you have questions about it, reach out anytime because it could be a little bit confusing if you haven't ever done this stuff before. So I'm going to try to break it down to where it's not. But it also takes practice. So you might do this one time and you might not really notice too much. But when you practice it as a practice, you're going to start to notice that you're just going to have so much more freedom in your life and your body and your mind and your spirit because you're not going to be holding on to the, uh, the subconscious underlying story that you're fucked up. Okay. That's essentially it. Right. All right. So, all right. So first thing we're going to do is you're going to recognize when you're in judgment, like, okay, I recognize I'm in judgment around this guy. I feel so fortunate that I can have this conversation with my girlfriends and then we can do healing work together to like really mitigate all that stuff. And so that we can move our own selves forwards in our timeline of spiritual development. Um, so, you know, if you, if you need that, I'm here for you. Okay. But first thing you do recognize when you're in judgment, so you recognize it. And then the second thing you're going to do is you're going to see where you have a matching picture. And what I mean by a matching picture is just what I talked about earlier. So, okay, I'm looking at him. He's fucked up. Who does he think he is? That's my judgment. And so the matching picture is, oh, so where is it within myself where I feel like I'm fucked up? So I look inside myself and go, oh, yeah, I do. I feel that way about myself. Okay, I do feel like I'm fucked up a little bit. Okay. So those are my matching pictures. So what we're going to do is we're going to blow those up because everything is energy and we can do an energetic process together that will help get rid of that energetic vibration so you don't have to keep carrying that, right? Now, obviously, once we get rid of it, it's still a choice if you want to keep owning that and putting it back in your space. Go for it. It's not going to feel great and you'll have to do this work over and over and over again. But if you're willing to like let it go, then you're just going to let it go. Um, Not to say I haven't worked on things more than once, (laughs) like around food. That's a big one for me. I have worked on that multiple times throughout my uh, 20 years of working on myself or 25, whatever it is, right? Like that's, that's my big one. That's the hard one. Um, But thinking I'm thinking I'm fucked up has been a problem in the past. So it's no, no real surprise that I'm working on it again. Right. So, um, so here's how you blow a matching picture. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to just ground. So just connect yourself with the earth. And become aware of your field. Like the space around your body that is your space. Notice the integrity of the boundary of your field. And knowing that this space is your space. You are in absolute control of your field, of your space. You get to choose what comes in. You get to choose what goes out. And this is your space. And then just let anything that doesn't belong there move out. Let it move down the grounding cord to the center of the earth. Let it be transmuted to light. And just clear out your space. All right. These are these are practices I've done in earlier uh, podcasts. And um, these are just things that I just naturally do at the beginning of every meditation and every day. Uh, so I'm not going to just take too much time on that part. But just clear your space. Set your grounding cord. Clear your space. Have a good integrity in your auric field. 
And then what you're going to do outside of your auric field is you're going to put a rose. And this is called a vacuum rose. So this rose has a vacuum on it, kind of like your grounding cord, because your grounding cord vacuums out all the gunk that doesn't belong, right? So this vacuum rose does the same thing. So but this is specific for matching pictures. So what you're going to do is you're going to throw into this vacuum rose any of your matching pictures. The I'm fucked up. I'm an eavesdropper. I'm fat. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a doctor. Who do I think I am? You know, whatever the storylines are, right? I just throw all those into that vacuum rose and let that, whatever your storylines are that are inhibiting you or limiting you or causing you to be in judgment, throw those in that rose. And you'll know what they are because they're going to match what you're seeing in the other person. So you're not throwing away the other person. You're not blowing up the other person's pictures. You're not doing any of that. Nothing. This isn't about the other person at all. This is about you. This is about you letting go of your limiting factors. All right, you're letting go of the judgments around yourself. So you're throwing them into this rose. This rose will get full. And when the rose gets full, you put a little bomb underneath it, blow that rose up, but be done with it. And if you're still got more that you need to get rid of, put another rose out there, just keep filling it up. Sometimes I literally am like throwing luggage, <laughs> like old timey luggage. I see sometimes like coming out of my space into this rose and I'm just like throwing this stuff. I'm like, oh my God, this one's heavy. <laughs> you know, throwing it in there, throwing it in there. The rose just gets fuller and fuller and fuller. And then you put a little bomb under it, blow it up. And you just keep doing that until it's all gone. All right. So this is blowing matching, matching pictures. This is one way to do it. There's multiple ways to do this if you've had... Uh, I worked with a shaman, I studied with a shaman for many years and he has another way of doing it, but this is kind of a fun way to do it. Cause I like the visual of the rose and I like it because it also serves as, um, a non, like it's, it's not you. It serves as like a non, like it doesn't have an, a predisposition in any direction. It's just a rose, right? So you can just throw stuff in it and throw it and blow it up and put another one there. It's like no big deal. Um, yeah. So it helps take your ego out of the out of the equation. All right. So you're going to recognize when you're in judgment, you're going to see where you have matching pictures, and then you're going to blow those matching pictures up. All right. So those are the first three steps. The next step is to notice if you have any cords with this person. So one person, particularly, um, I can, I can remember this little experience. I, I didn't notice so much with this person, but um, once I had, not too long past, I had this experience with a person and I felt incredibly judged by her. Well, okay, I did the same process with her because I was like, oh, well, if, she, if I feel judged by her, I'm judging myself. So let me throw those judge self-judgment pictures up. Like, let me blow those up, throw them in the rows, blow them up, get them red, like blowing up my matching pictures around self-judgment. All right, done. Okay. <laughs> and then... Um, and then I also noticed that I had cords. I, she kept coming back into my mind. I kept even after blowing up matching pictures, I kept seeing her face and thinking about the experience. And so I knew because it kept arising that there was, um, there were cords. I had corded her and she had corded me. And essentially what that means is I've just energetically corded myself into her space and or, which is probably just and actually, because if you're doing that to one person, if it doesn't go just one way. It always goes two ways. Uh, she had cords in my space. So then the next thing you do is you remove the cords. Now, if you're not a visual person, it's no big deal. So you don't have to like know exactly where those cords are. You can, if you see them, you just kind of push them in and turn them kind of like a bottle cap and pull them off your space. You know, usually they'll be in alignment with the chakras. So maybe in the center of the heart, the center of the belly, the power center, maybe in the first chakra around, um, survival, who knows, it could be in your throat around having a voice. It doesn't really matter. Just get those, get those cords out of your space. I would not cut them because you don't want the cords to be left in your space. You just want to be able to pull them out. So they kind of click, click in, turn and pull out and then move them out of your space. Um, if that's unavailable for you in your visualization or your, um, understanding on an energetic level, then what you can do is you can take a purple ring of light above your head and let it just move down slowly down past your body down past your shoulders, down past your chest, down past your hips, down past your knees, all the way past your feet into the center of the earth. And so every time, and you're going to sweep this over your body three times or more if you need it, but every time this purple ring of light makes a sweep down your body, it pulls out the cords for you. So you don't, you don't have to do all the work yourself. You can just like 
sweep, sweep, sweep. Space is clear. Okay, good. Chords are gone. All right. <laughs> I know I'm like, this is a really great practice and I probably could talk really lengthily, length, lengthily. Is that even a word? Uh, I could probably talk for a very long time on just removing cords, but I just wanted to give you this practice. So if we were workshopping together, we would take some time with this and I'd make sure that you were making it happen for yourself and feeling good about that. So again, if you have any questions about any of these things that I ever go over, please reach out. Um, okay. So we've recognized when we're in judgment, we see where we have matching pictures, we blow up our matching pictures and we remove the cords. So you can also, um, if you want to remove cords another way, you could put another vacuum rose out in front of you and you can, you can, you can just set the intention for it to draw all your energy back from her or him and then draw all their energy back out of your space. So you both can have your energy go back to each other, uh, so that you are whole and complete and they are whole and complete and leave it at that. Like it's real simple. And then once that's done, seal this process with a healing and you can do some prayer work and just ask for their other person's healing and your own healing to happen through this process. Be grateful for the process. You could also, um, say something nice to the other person or give them a compliment. So um, I really love doing that. And I highly encourage you to do that. So if you have someone that you're having funkiness with and you're in judgment around and you know they keep coming up in your space or your mind and you're like, okay, I'm going to do this whole thing. And you blow up your matching pictures and you remove your cords and you're like, okay, I've got my space back. And then you see that person <laughs> and you're like, oh, what do you do with that, right? Well, what you do with that is you find something to say to them that's nice or complimentary. So um, it doesn't matter what it is. You can talk to them about how great they are. That, you know, Hey, it's so cool. You know how to do this. Or, hey, I really love that those earrings. Hey, thank you so much for showing up in the way that you do. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Give them a compliment. And then when you do that, I want you to just like really be with the feelings that are happening in your space, the feelings that are happening inside your body and your mind. And when you do that, you're going to feel a shift happen on an energetic level <clears throat> that just kind of seals the deal. Like it's not necessary that you do that, but if you do do that, you're going to feel it so profoundly that you'll know that you won't really have to revisit it. It's just going to be over. So this is just a self-healing process that allows you to let go of self-judgment or any kind of judgment for that matter and turn it into love. It also releases that other person from your storyline. So you create with your thoughts. And these creations not only affect you and your reality, but it affects the people that you're having judgment around. It affects, you put them in a little tiny box when you have judgment. Oh, this person's fat and ugly and they're not worth, they're worthless. Oh, okay. So you're seeing them through that lens, which causes an energetic imprint on their field, which can cause them to see themselves through that lens, lens as well. And you don't really want to do that. Now that you have this information, you have to know that you cannot do that. Like you have to take responsibility and, and work towards healing yourself so that other people can be released from your judgments, that other people can be released from your hatred and your disgust and your denial and your funkiness that you're, you're painting on someone else's field. Like stop, just stop doing that. Right. And the way you stop doing that is you heal yourself first. Again, heal yourself first. I just spoke in another uh, episode just recently about, you got to take care of yourself first. If you're a mom and you're on a plane, the, the people on the plane are going to tell you, put your O2 mask on first before you put your kids on. Right. Like you got to heal yourself first. Like you have to do that. And that's what this is about. So I love these practices. And if you want to spend some more time with me doing this kind of thing, uh, we're planning a, a retreat, like a group of us, um, all my little rainbow girlfriends and a few other practitioners are going to be offering a retreat in 2020 and we're going to be like taking it to a whole new level. So I'm so excited. I can't wait, ladies. All right. Feel the shift. Love yourself. Have compassion and do whatever it takes to turn your 
soul on. Thank you for tuning in to Turn Your Soul On Radio. If you're finding yourself living a more inspired life because of this show, help spread the light. Share this episode with every woman you know looking to live their lives a little more on fire. I'd also be grateful if you headed over to iTunes and left a heartfelt review, which really helps the growth of the show. I'd also like to invite you to deepen your connection with our community by joining our private Facebook group, Turn Your Soul On. And if you have any other questions, feel free to shoot us an email at admin at dot drbrandyvictory.com. Thanks so much for being here today and I'll talk to you next time. May your soul be turned on. This podcast is for information purposes only. Dr. Brandy Victory is not a medical doctor and the views and statements expressed on this podcast are not medical advice. This podcast, including Dr. Brandy Victory and the producers, disclaim responsibility from any possible adverse effects from the use of information contained herein. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. This podcast does not make any representations or warranties about guest qualifications or credibility. This podcast may contain paid endorsements and advertisements for products or services. Individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein. If you think you have a medical problem, consult a licensed physician.